Hello, I'm Joe Lenton from Original Art Photography. In this video we're looking at processing fog images. So this is a image that I took um, a few weeks back in Cromer in Norfolk along the promenade on a foggy day. So I'm just going to show you a few ideas for how we can process this. First of all I'm going to show you uh, a few very quick ways of doing it using some of the presets that are available to our members. So just to take you through some of those very quickly. Um, one that works reasonably well here is the high contrast monochrome. Uh, you can see the effect of that. It's uh, brought out a lot of the detail really well and uh, gives you quite a nice black and white image. Another one that works well is the color split tone or the inky split tone. They're similar but slightly different and uh, again with those um, it it brings out the scene quite nicely and keeps the, the mood for you. If you want to go a little bit more oldie word, worldy, then you can use one of the two uh, sepia presets like that, which uh, again give you quite a nice sort of atmospheric um, rendition of it. So all of those are available um, for free downloads to our um, series photographer and focus professional members. And um, I'm just going to show you one or two ways of working with this uh, image uh, without using those or to produce sort of similar effects so that you know um, roughly what's behind what I was doing there. In terms of the composition here, the only thing I'm not terribly happy with is this bit down, down the bottom here where we've got some curves from what is a sort of circular feature um, on the promenade that, that's just not looking very nice in there. So I'm going to just recrop that and bring that up a little bit so that we lose that bit from the bottom. There we go. So that's already looking a little bit better. Now when you've got uh, fog like this, there are various approaches to dealing with it. Essentially what you're looking to do is increase the contrast if you want to bring out some of the, the detailing, some of the, uh, um, the figures that we've got in here to begin to see bits of the building at the back there. Now for one way of course is to play around with the contrast slider but that doesn't necessarily give you the best result because that does also push our lighter areas up brighter as well. You can use the clarity slider that's sometimes a little bit better result than using just the contrast slider. You can see we've not lost quite so much um, of the pier over here we haven't gone quite so bright as we did when we used the contrast slider. We can just instead focus on the blacks themselves and use the the black slider and uh, and pull that down possibly the or the and or the shadow slider one of those two then we know that we're just working with those um, darker tones and you can see that that's that's brought them out made them much more prominent uh, without over brightening uh, the scene as a whole so essentially what we're doing is finding ways of bringing bringing a little bit more black into it so it doesn't look quite so um, Sort of insipid as it is at the moment. Uh, it's still quite sort of nice and at atmospheric, but we want to bring out a little bit more of the detail that's there. There's the dehaze slider as well at the bottom here, and that one, if you take that across to the right, that has a similar effect to contrast, but it does actually make one or two other adjustments as well. You can see there that if we pull that all the way over, that's clearly too much, but it has actually brought out quite a lot of the detail in the picture. It's brought out a lot of the detail of the uh, Appear over here so that's very clear to see we can see these figures and the top of the railings there very clearly and if we take that back to where it was and you can see take that back down to zero you can see the clearly the difference between that there's some bits which you don't see at all which all of a sudden come into view with the dehaze slider by the way if you want to effectively add fogginess you just take it a little bit across to the left and you can see it just makes it look even more foggy so it's it's a useful way if you want to just do a quick adjustment um, to, to get rid of some of the fog and bring things back a little bit, then that's not a bad way of doing it. You can then go from there and uh, increase the effect if you want to with uh, using some of the other sliders up here. So by putting a few of them working in conjunction together like that, you can bring things out that little bit more. The more that you do that with the blacks, of course, you will start to lose some of that hazy sort of feel. Um, but it's preferable to be able to have some details, and you don't want to be over brightening your whites, otherwise you're just going to lose any detail at, um, in the in the fog there completely. If we just go back to how it was when we came in, you can see what a difference we can make just by playing with a few sliders like that. So 
the contrast slider okay for this sort of area but not so good for the very pale areas the uh, clarity slightly better overall a uh, bit more balanced uh, and then the um, uh, dehaze one that we saw down the bottom here as well so it's just run that from beginning so you can see that you can make quite a difference with that dehaze slider there if you want to do so now if you're looking for a slightly more sort of vintage feel to um, to an image like this then you're often going to be looking at um, putting it in black and white uh, taking some of the color out or perhaps split toning it a little bit so I'm just going to do that a little bit of a mix of those various different sliders uh, to create a slightly clearer scene you can if you want to use um, something like a graduated filter to add in a little bit more of uh, one of the effects drag that drag that down there oh dear that went the wrong way so you can just add it in to the upper part of the image like that for example without having it absolutely everywhere but then if we're going to try and make it look that little bit more sort of vintage um, take it to black and white we don't necessarily have to go to black and white if we're going to tone it but in this particular instance it does work quite well if you take it to black and white first and then you go to your split tones and then you if you want a classic sort of sepia effect then you're looking at having both the highlights and the shadows in this kind of red orange yellow sort of area it's going for a almost a, it's a slightly sort of orangey color sort of like so so I'll just bring these up a little bit just so you can see it uh, and um, there's no exact point along there where it's the correct setting it's just finding what it is that you like as a balance between there what kind of sepia effect that you're after you can go for something that's a little bit more on the red side or you can go for something that's a little bit more on the yellow side uh, depends what sort of thing you you're after what you like how strong you want it to be as well you can have it go very sort of ye uh, yellowy orange or just a very sort of subtle amount of color that you've added in um, in addition to the sepia you can do a kind of cross processing type of an effect so you can pop the shadows in as like a, a blue perhaps and then the highlights in the sort of a yellowy orangey kind of a color that works quite nicely and with that one you can also knock it back to color and still keep on that sort of split tone effect and it looks quite effective if I just take that off and put that on again you can see that's color with the split toning effect on there and uh, those last two are very similar to the effect got from the presets color split tone and inky split tone um, they are created in a very sort of similar way to what I've just done there uh, so one of them clearly has just been left as a color image and then toned and the other one taken to black and white and then had the toning applied to it later in terms of the um, the feel for the uh, for the image if you go for a, a warmer sort of feel for fog like this then it might feel a little bit more like smog perhaps if you want it to feel a little bit more wintry then you may want to keep the, the the colors more in the sort of blues that's obviously too strong so you have to just take your take our saturation back right back there just pop that in here so with a little bit of blue in there like that if I just turn that off so there's black and white and there's with a hint of blue that gives it that slightly cooler f um, feel to the image so it makes it feel perhaps a little bit more uh, wintry um, maybe it makes it feel a little bit more like it's um, a wet rainy sort of um, environment as well so the colors that you use to tone it will change the feel of the image um, so it's not just about do you want it sepia or cross-processed or some other vintage effect it's well do you want it to feel a bit warmer or do you want it to have a, a cooler sort of starker feel to it uh, in which case uh, you know choose your colors accordingly and uh, then all this we can do nicely in Lightroom without even having to go into Photoshop and of course if you want to you can bring in a little bit of a um, of a vignette just to focus the attention a little bit in the middle like that um, you don't want to go too strong with vignettes most of the time so there you can see it does make quite a difference quite quickly with this type of image so you've got to be careful how much you put on because there you see I've only got minus 10 it's not like there's a, a massive vignette on there at all so if I just take that back just a tiny notch like that so oops 
So that's before a vignette and that's after. And even with only a very weak vignette, you can see how much it's darkening things down. It can help bring out this um, area of the front of the pier a little bit because that's right on the edge of the, of the frame. But you don't want to darken everything down too much. So there's a few simple um, ideas that you can use there when you're processing fog. Think about uh, foggy pictures. Think about um, bringing in dark tones using contrast, clarity, the dehaze slider, or just the blacks or the shadows sliders to bring some of the uh, blacker detail back in. And uh, you might want to combine them to get a more ple uh, pleasant effect. And then you can convert to black and white and split tone to get that slightly more vintage look to it all. And in terms of your sharpening for your detail, make sure that when you do that, you don't want to have it in the middle of the of the fog like this, because it just all ends up looking a bit grainy. Um, it's not necessarily a bad thing having things a little bit grainy in this sort of uh, situation. But then make sure you go to something where there is a little bit of uh, detail that you can that you can see uh, if you want to be working on your sharpening, because otherwise it's just very very hard to see anything. You see when you start dragging those sliders across there. Uh, it's hard to make out what's going on at all. So I would recommend go for something that's a little bit sort of clearer, maybe something like that bench there. And now we can choose to sharpen it and then mask our sharpening off. I'm just holding down the Alt or the Option key, by the way, while dragging the masking slider there, just to stop it applying the effect to too much of it. And we can just turn that off and on again. And that's just added that little bit of extra sharpening, bring the detail out. There's more that you could then go on to do in Photoshop if you wanted to, but as you can see, you can get quite a nice result there uh, just using Lightroom. If you want to speed things up a bit, then these uh, presets do help. So just once again, we can think of like a sort of sepia tone. And then once you've got these, of course, you can um, you can fiddle with the sliders. You don't have to leave things exactly as they are. You can then bring in some clarity, for example, if you wanted to. You could get rid of that vignette if you don't like that. Um, and then we've also got these inky uh, split tone, color split tone, and high, high contrast monochrome. And um, these sort of um, presets are very useful if you want to just experiment with a, with, a, with a few different looks very quickly without having to do all the sliders manually over here. That then once you've got that, you can then, of course, tweak it. So we've got our monochrome here. We could then say, actually, I wanted to give that a little bit of a... Uh, vintage toning so we can then come down into our split toning area uh, we could go for a cross processing sort of idea uh, something like oh, too strong something, something a bit like that perhaps um, so we can build on what you've already got from the presets they don't replace completely what else you might do they just speed up um, the process and they uh, enable you to see what's going to happen very quickly if you start to go in a particular direction so I hope you found that useful, and if you would like uh, to have those presets, then uh, they are available to serious photographer members and focus professional members to download from the members area of our website. I'm Joe Lenton, thank you for watching.